because he was such a dominant player on the ice and you couldn't make him anything but captain. I'm not sure he really grew into that role for a few years. Yeah, let's go downstairs right now, check out the arena. 88 forever indeed. And the next voice you hear will be Flyers public address Good announcer, evening. Lou Nolan. Welcome to a very special evening in Flyers history as we play tribute to a man who not only dazzled us on this very Wells Fargo Center ice, but changed the way the game of hockey was to be played forever. When Eric Lindros made his NHL debut on October 6th of 1992, hockey experts knew that the six foot four, 240 pound player would make a difference in the Flyers organization. However, they didn't know he would redefine a position. You see, the man who wore number 88 wasn't just a big player. He could skate, he could score from any angle, he could run over and through defensemen at will. He was the ultimate power forward. He played this game the way the Flyers play this game. Tough, hungry, and fearless. Tonight, Eric Lindros joins the likes of Bernie Perrant, Mark Howe, Barry Ashby, Bill Barber, Bobby Clark, and Ed Snyder as we raise his number to the rafters and retire his 88 forever. taking the puck to the net, um, could shoot the puck, had a fierce determination. Eric was one of the only guys, 6'4 and bigger, that can move and do the things that he did. It was just a battle. He was so big and strong and so hard to contain. And you knew whenever you're coming up against him, you're in for a, a, a tough and a long night. It's better playing on his team than against him, I can tell you that. You could see the makings of, of what was uh, what was soon to be with a couple of uh, couple of moves. just seemed to click. We all liked to go to the rink. We all were pretty intense people in terms of practice. It's unwavering support. It really, truly is. We've always taken a lot of pride in when players play here, they're part of us. And the benefits of being part of the Flyers are tremendous. The benefit of having Eric Linders on our team was tremendous, too. I'm very blessed and lucky to have played in Philadelphia. Oh, my God. 
Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please welcome to the Ice Flyers president, Mr. Paul Holmgren, who just happened to bring along some friends with him. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all are filling up the Flyers! the other point. Thank you, Lou. Thank you, Lou. Hello to all our great Flyers fans on this very special night. On behalf of Comcast Spectacor and the entire Flyers organization, I would like to welcome Eric and his family. It's an honor and a privilege. It's an honor and a privilege to be here tonight for what is truly a special moment for the Philadelphia Flyers. Without any doubt, this is the highest honor that the organization can bestow upon one of its members. Take a look at the rafters. Only five players out of 600 to have ever worn the orange and black, and now that number will be six. When you think of the Philadelphia Flyers, the history, the tradition, the legacy, and the moments we've all shared together in this building and in the spectrum, only a few names come to mind right away. And only a few moments are remembered in an instant. Eric Lindros is one of those names. And number 88 will always be remembered in those great moments. So, Eric, from this moment forward, 
Number 88 will be among the great players in our rafters for past, present, and future generations to see and know that it is your number and your number only. To say Eric was a game changer doesn't do the phrase justice. We've all heard the term generational player, and Eric was. Never before was there a player with his unique blend of size, speed, and skill mixed with toughness, grit, and determination. And, da and I dare say there never will. It's, it's safe to make the statement, and I believe all our fans here tonight would agree, you were remarkable to watch. Every shift, he kept us on the edge of our seat, waiting for that huge hit, for a tremendous pass, or a beautiful goal. Many of, his, many of us here tonight were able to watch and admire one of hockey's great players. <clears throat> I know I speak for everyone in the organization, and certainly all the fans here tonight. It is great to have you with us. When we raise your number in a few moments, know that you're back where you belong. And this time, it's forever. You know, I remember sitting at the announcer's table in 1992, the energy of our beloved Spectrum had when I first announced this young man's name over our PA system. I was proud to do it then. I'm proud and honored to do it now. Ladies and gentlemen, number 88, Eric Lindros. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Paul. You know, it's always great to come back to Philadelphia and to be uh, together tonight for this incredible honor. It's special for me and my family. I'd first like to thank the Flyer organization. This evening has given me a chance to reflect, to remember special moments, special people, and of course you, the amazing fans that support the Flyers of Philadelphia. I am truly a lucky person. I'm surrounded here by my entire family, including my wife and our, our three children. Our oldest son, Carl Pierre, has been on this ice once before, and I'd like to point out that this is the first time that our twins, Sophie and Ryan, have had a chance to visit the city of brotherly love, and we've been treated so well all week long. It's been absolutely amazing. Thank you. While we live in Toronto and our kids grow up in a city so closely tied to the blue and white of the Maple Leafs, my wife Keenan and I will do our best to share with them the history and heritage of the Flyers organization. I had an opportunity to play here for eight seasons starting in 92. Over that time I was blessed to play along some of the some great coaches, managers, trainers, and most importantly, teammates. Bill Deneen was simply a terrific man. <laughs> Terry Murray, a wonderful teaching coach. And of course, Roger Nielsen, who understood that different players are motivated in different ways. He really cared for his guys. Russ Farwell did a good job drafting. Drafting players like Yanni Ninema and my great friend, who is also here this evening. You get to see him later, Michael Renberg. <laughs> Bob Clark knows talent, and our teams reflected that. He built our teams with scoring, defense, and depth, making probably the best trade our team could have hoped for, acquiring Gilbert Dion and Flyer Hall of Famers Eric Desjardins and my running mate, Johnny LeClaire.
Johnny remains my great friend, and I'll be honest with you, I think he belongs in the Hockey Hall of Fame. Just saying. I was privileged to play with so many great teammates over the years, and if I may name a few, and there are so many, veterans like Kevin Deneen, Dave Brown, Craig McTavish, Dale Howarchuk, Ron Hextall, Terry Karkner, Joel Otto, Luke Richardson, Dave Babbage, characters like Keith Jones and Danny Lacroix. And we all cannot forget about Roddy Brindamore. Those are just a few of the great athletes and people I had a chance to skate with. Our teams had some excellent training support. Behind the scenes, people like Jim McCrossin, Harry Bricker, Turk Evers, Rocco Rotorial, just to name a few. These people don't get a lot of credit, and a lot of times you don't know what they're up to, but they're the ones every night giving us a chance to play as well as we can. So on behalf of everybody that laces them up and every flyer, we thank you. Looking back, I can't help but remember the support you, the fans, gave us. I try now to explain to people just how loud the arenas got, the Spectrum, the Wells Fargo Center, how jammed the highways were with people trying to get to the parking lot to rev things up hours before a big game, how packed the arena was for the Flyers' Wives Carnival. Incredible atmospheres. Flyer players are lucky to play in a city where their fans truly know the game of hockey. Appreciate the little things are, of course, rowdy, but, but, <laughs> for sure, but also show heart, like you showed the night that Mario Lemieux returned from his battle with cancer. A standing ovation. Very classy, and I won't forget it. It's no secret that when I left Philadelphia, it was under less than ideal circumstances. I believe I'm here today, hockey aside, because of two people. My wife, Kina, and Paul Holmgren. Both in their own ways have taught me to move on, put in the past any differences of opinion, any hard feelings. It was time to remember the great moments I experienced here in Philadelphia, the friendships I have built in this great city, and the respect I have for the fans of this team. So once again, thank you to the Flyer organization for this incredible honor and to be up with, with the great names that are up there already. It's, it's truly an honor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This time we'd like to introduce some very special people who are here celebrating this evening with Eric. Please welcome our sister-in-law, Sandra, and brother, former NHL player, Brett Lindros. Next up is Eric's sister, Robin Lindros, along with his parents, Bonnie and Carl Lindros, escorted by fellow Legion of Doom linemates, number 10, John LeClaire, and number 19, Michael Renberg. And lastly, please welcome Eric's immediate family, his beautiful wife, Kina Lindros, along with his children, Carl Pierre, and twins, Sophie Rose and Ryan Paul. This time we ask that Paul Homer join Eric just to the right of the podium as he presents the Flyers' gift to Eric, a brand new Rolex Yachtmaster 40 watch. From Philadelphia's own God Byrne Jewelers, this beautiful watch is personally inscribed with the infamous Lindros 88 on the inside. We hope when you look at it, Eric, you'll always remember the contributions you made to the Flyers and the city of Philadelphia. Eric, head on over there with your family. Fans, it's a moment we've all been waiting for. 
Eric will join his family at the location of the banner as you raise your number 88 to the rafters. Eric Lindas, from tonight until eternity, your number 88 will never be worn by another Philadelphia Flyers player. In honor of all the contributions you have made to our organization in the city of Philadelphia, there it is, ladies and gentlemen, number 88, Eric Lindas, retired. family, the Lindros family and the Flyers, thank you for being part of this historic night. We'll now have a brief intermission prior to warm ups beginning. Followed by tonight's matchup featuring the Toronto Maple Leafs and your Philadelphia Flyers. Eric Lindros, congratulations! And Eric Lindros, with his beautiful family, watching 88 go to the rooftop and stay there forevermore. And that echoes the words of Flyers president Paul Holmgren who said, Eric, know that you're back where you belong, and this time it's forever. And as we bring in Bill Clement, Bill, watching this, look, it gave us chills, really, very emotional ceremony. He was passionate in what he had to say. Homer was great. Nicely done as that number goes up. For me, part of the chills came from watching the man that has the same values that he had when he played for the Flyers, but he's at a different stage of his life, and to see his beautiful daughter kind of nestle into his neck when he picked her up, um, those are beautiful moments. The hockey memories and the memories that Eric Lindros created for fans are just one component of his life, and he's in a different phase, and it's a happy phase for him. And to think that his uh, line mates from the Legion of Doom were here. Michael Renberg, by the way, doesn't live locally. He kind of yeah. flew in from Stockholm, Sweden for this. No big deal. And John LeClaire, uh, to, to have them on board was... It, it, and they should always be together, because that Legion of Doom line was the line that almost everybody, other than Clark, Barber, and Leach... That That's Legion the line. Of Doom line is the line in Philadelphia Flyers history. Mm -hmm. The best line ever. Yeah, and, and uh, when you listen to the acknowledgments that Eric gave, uh, so much gratitude to the fans of Philadelphia, and in particular, uh, he singled out Mario Lemieux's return from battling Hodgkin's lymphoma, and the night he returned was in Philadelphia, and how he got a standing ovation and how he will never forget that. And I, I had no clue that that meant that much to Eric. But for anybody that's a sensing, feeling, legit, stand-up person, that had to move you. And it was so great to hear Eric say that it was, a, it was a standing ovation that Mario Lemieux got that really moved him when he was a member of the Flyers. And I thought that was a, a special tribute to the Philadelphia fans. And Eric, Eric said many great things about the fans, but that... I, I just that shook me. I mean, I said, wow, it was special when that happened. But to think that Eric Lindros had that in his category of special moments that he remembers about Philadelphia fans, perfect tribute. March 2nd, 1993, as Mario Lemieux returned from battling cancer, and uh, obviously it was at the spectrum, and it's something I think if you were there, you will never forget. The other thing that I thought was very interesting is that he did not shy away from the hurt feelings aspect of the whole thing. And, and he said that it was his wife, but also Paul Holmgren, who helped him pack it all up mm -hmm. and put it away and move forward. And I thought, uh, I thought the way he did it was classy. He acknowledged that there was a wrinkle in the relationship, yep. to put it mildly, and, and that it was overcome. Uh, and that's tough to do in a moment like that. Well, I'm sure his wife helped him heal the wounds from the past, but Paul Holmgren is such an underrated... Um, leader and statesman and the way he carries himself and handles himself and Paul's a quiet guy 
But when Paul talks to you from the heart, as he did to Eric to get him to come back for the Winter Classic, it was so from the heart. And Paul painted things as they should be painted moving forward, not, not looking into the past. In other words, there was no rearview mirror, I'm sure, to his discussion with Eric Lindros about what happened in the past. This is moving forward. We love you. You are a part of this organization. And we should have the kind of relationship moving forward that somebody that, that gave as much as you did to our organization uh, deserves and something that our fan base wants and, and, and would, would cherish and love. And Paul Holman is the guy that brokered this, this from a flyer standpoint, he is the man that brokered this re reunification of the, of the Lindros legacy and the current Flyers organization. And, and perhaps we hope that he, he won't be a stranger, as they, as they say. Uh, John LeClaire certainly lives in the area, and uh, Toronto's not sure. that far. Uh, I would be remiss if, if I did not mention, uh, he did, Eric mentioned Bob Clark. Ed Snyder was not mentioned by either uh, by Homer or, or, or by Eric, perhaps just one of those things. But I'm getting tweets about it, and so, I'm just, yeah, we, we noticed as well. Uh, so let's take a quick time out. We come back, and when we return, Bill and I will get you set for tonight's Flyers Toronto Maple Leafs matchup. And uh, perhaps fitting, Eric living in Toronto, grew up in the Toronto area, that they're playing the Leafs on this night. Keith Jones, former Lindros teammate, will be joining us as well for On Ice Live as we continue pre-game live, driven by AAA on the night that Eric's 88 goes to the rafters.